Welcome to your Yes Build Life. I'm your host, Brenda Winkle, educator, healer, speaker, guide, and fierce advocate for your yes. I help sensitive and successful men and women find, reclaim, and live from their full embodied yes. Through empowering you to understand your energetic hygiene, establish healthy boundaries, and heal your nervous system, you'll be able to create your yes-filled life and move through your days with more freedom, more ease, and more joy. You'll hear inspiring stories of people who found their full-bodied yes, thought leaders who pursued their own dreams and are living life on their terms, and learn new ways to find the courage, joy, ease, and freedom to more fully step into your yes-filled life. Say no to the good so you can say yes to the great. Join me on this journey to discover your yes-filled life. Whether you're looking to break free from the golden handcuffs, start a new business, find your dream job, or simply live with more intention and mindfulness, I've got you covered. Let's explore the possibilities together and make your dreams a reality. Ready? Let's do this. Let's get you to your Yes, build life. Hello and welcome to your Yes, Build Life. I'm your host, Brenda Winkle. If this is your first time here, welcome. I hope you love uh, this episode. I hope you love the podcast. And if you've been listening for a while, thank you so much for listening. Thank you for your ratings, for your reviews, for sharing the podcast with people you care about. My mission is to reconnect you with your personal sense of empowerment to find your way back to your soul's mission. And I'm so excited to be using the podcast as a vehicle for your personal empowerment. In other words, helping you find your yes-filled life. I am hosting a retreat in Beaverton, Oregon, April 1 through 5. You can come attend the retreat and leave as an energy healer. At this retreat, April 1 through 5 in Beaverton, Oregon, you can learn about your energy, and what expanding into energy healing looks like, you can test holding space for yourself by getting your Reiki 1 attunement. That's right. You can become Reiki 1 certified at this retreat. You will enjoy breathwork sessions led by me, Hot Seats, a community of people who really get you. You'll learn to be yourself while in community. We'll cook meals in sisterhood, laughing around the kitchen with a village mentality. Everyone has a job. Everyone's contributing. And by the way, all meals are provided. You can enjoy evenings of connections, cards, and deep conversation around the fire. And we'll also have a couple of excursions. To learn more, click the link in the show notes or go to brendawinkle.com forward slash retreat. Now, today on the podcast, I am thrilled to be introducing you to Anat Perry. Anat is the CEO and founder of Training Camp for the Soul, TCS, and renowned creator and master facilitator of the TCS method. Anat Perry is an inner child healing expert in the coaching and wellness space who has devoted her life to empowering those at the forefront of the coaching industry to scale their businesses, overcome overwhelm, build confidence, and master their craft while attracting their ideal clients. Her approach to healing and personal growth isn't merely informative. It's a profound experience that curates lasting change. Anat's background blends traditional healing arts and modern psychology with somatic and inner child reparenting techniques that have enabled her to guide hundreds of practitioners, business owners, and their teams through her TCS method. This method creates the kind of change that shapes the future of the world of leadership as we know it. I cannot wait for you to meet Anat. Let's dive into this conversation. Hello, Anat. Thank you for joining me. Thanks, Brenda, for having me. Hi, listeners. I'm so excited for this conversation. And before we were recording, we realized that our worlds overlap a little bit, even though this is our first time meeting. It's it's not our first time connecting with similar people. And I just love synchronicities. And you were telling me before we logged in or before we pushed record that you had a synchronistic moment with someone who's been on this podcast. And that is uh, Samantha Skelly. Yeah, yeah. Yeah. I was leaving the farmer's market the other day on Sunday and I was like, I'm going to get my favorite matcha latte. 
And then I like heard spirit say to me, like, you're going to run into Sam Skelly. And I haven't seen, I, I've not seen Sam since like the summer. So it's not like, oh, she's always there. You're always running there. It was just like, okay, spirit, sure. <laughs> and lo and behold, I'm in line, almost at the register. And she taps on my shoulder. And I scream so loud. I think I scared the person at the register. <laughs> And I was like, oh my god! I'm sorry. And I said, there was like, I totally like called you in, like manifested you. And then the wildest part about it, I was like, oh, where are you sitting? Where's your table? Because I thought she was there having whatever brunch or lunch. And she's like, oh no, I literally was just I parked and was walking to this boutique down the street, and something told me to walk in here, and I just walked in and saw you. <laughs> so I was like, oh, so I like magnetized you to fulfill on my, um, yeah, my intuitions and knowing. It's amazing. I love yeah. stories like that. And that seems like a beautiful place to just kick it off. So Anat, could yeah. you please tell our listeners who may not have met you yet a little bit about yourself and the work that you do? Yeah. So um, I've been in the self-development space for, wow, 19 years and I've uh, been coaching and working with those that want to deepen into their own healing um, for the past eight and a half as an inner child expert mm. it's really my my sweet spot and then uh, training and developing other coaches and healers in the past three years in my method so getting to spread the wings that way and make a bigger impact and um, I still pinch myself every day that like I'm here. I'm very humble around it. It wasn't my plan to, I think it was, it was like my own healing journey that got me into this 19 years ago. Uh, it was my own desire for it. Um, especially my relationship with my mom. And then I quickly fell in love with transformation. It was seeing people transform. Um, but it took me 10 years to get to the root of my stuff. Mm. And when I finally did, you know, it took, finding the right mentors, the right method, all that. I mean, it wasn't as accessible as it is today with Instagram. Mm -hmm, right, right. Um, yeah. And when I did and what it felt like, you know, real transformation, I realized was not a walk in a park on a beautiful, sunny San Diego day. <laughs> there was a walk through a burning forest and there were some dragons to slay. And, but on the other side of it, like I couldn't imagine, I just couldn't even imagine how good freedom would feel like how good it would feel to be in my body to trust myself to have a relationship with myself to to feel safe with myself to want to spend time with myself because for years I suffered with anxiety and codependency and inability to like want to be by myself mm -hmm. um that like I wanted that for others I really I was like okay I have the right tools now like I really want to pass this along to others and um yeah, and that's how I began my journey eight years ago, eight and a half. And um, yeah, where I am today, training others was just, just, just their wanting and me just responding to that. So I'm on, I'm on this divine journey. I'm just along for the ride and serving in the way that I'm supposed to serve. I'm still like, okay, where are we going now, universe? All right. Oh my God. And sometimes it's, it's, you know, it's a roller coaster ride. <laughs> Oh, I love this. And it, <clears throat> excuse me, I found my way into healing the same way. I was looking for my own relief. Like it just mm -hmm. helped me not feel bad all the time was my, my, uh, my go-to. So I was like, yes, I'll try this. I'll try anything to feel better, to leave behind PTSD, to leave behind, you know, life that didn't feel aligned with me. And then I decided not only does this work, but this works for other people too. And it's exciting. Yeah. And I love that you're an inner child expert. And so obviously my voice is not normal today and <laughs> it's, fe you know, feeling raspy. And I was telling you before we pushed record that I had an inner child part come out to play with me this week. Someone that was feeling unheard, like she couldn't, couldn't safely speak her truth. And, yeah. um, really needing some love and attention. And there's a lot of our listeners who may not have ever heard of inner child work. Could mm -hmm. you, for somebody who's never heard about inner child work, could you help yeah. us know what that looks like? 
Yeah, for sure. There's a couple of parts to it in the way that I like to define it, which may be different than someone else who works with inner child work. Um, you want to think of your inner child as your emotion, the part of you that feels, whether those feelings are happy, joyful, horny, or sad, anxious, afraid. <laughs> and so any of these is, is that part. So whatever you're feeling, that's your inner child right now. So it's like, how I, I can't connect to my inner child. Sometimes people are trying so hard to connect to this like visual little girl or little boy. And I'm like, yeah, so what, how are you feeling about that? Oh, I'm frustrated. I'm like, there's your child. <laughs> it's uh -huh. just really about being able to connect to that emotion and then ultimately also connect to the sensations that are there on a deeper level. Um, and then also, uh, you know, inner child work for me is about unlearning what we learned in childhood, mm -hmm. recognizing that um, we are a product of, you know, imprint and that most of it was imprinted by the time we were seven years old by our caretakers, mom and dad, and that it's not who you are. It's what you learned. And if you learned it, you can unlearn it. And so to me, inner child work is exploring it from that lens of what did I learn? If, if there's something that's coming up for you, like, oh, I can't express myself or why do I feel so afraid to express myself? Then like the question is always like, well, whose energy is that? Who'd you learn that from? Who modeled that? Mm -hmm. Mom's energy or dad's energy? Is it what you saw, what you heard or what you felt energetically? And so it's the exploration into that so that you could remember who you really are and that you can remember that you have choice to create who you want to become and not just live in this hamster wheel of this script that you inherited, having to play roles that you were imprinted with. Yeah. Oh, I love this. So one of the things that I hear people talk about, and when I say people, I'm not necessarily talking about my clients, but you know, like people in the restaurants or people in a store line, they feel like they can't make a change. They feel like it's, it's not the right time. I can't do it because of my family commitments or my job. And I often link that to obviously some inner children, but also nervous system regulation. Like what does yeah. your nervous system have capacity to change awesome. and, and how does your nervous system perceive that threat? Is it life threatening to go outside of your comfort zone or is it something you could tolerate? And I'm, I'd love to hear your take on that. Yeah, absolutely. I mean, ultimately, <clears throat> inner child work is your access to everything that you desire. And the reason it's the access to your manifestations, to your desires, is because the more you learn to be with all parts of this child, the joyful part and the scared part, what you're doing is you are training your nervous system, you are retraining your nervous system, and you're building your capacity to handle more. And so when people ask me, like, so if someone works with you, what do they get? I'm like, yeah, you, you heal your past. But even if you don't have a quote unquote a lot that you think you need to heal from in your past, there's a lot for you to develop your capacity so that you can handle the challenges that life is going to keep handing you. I mean, I'm 44. I know it doesn't stop. <laughs> and the beautiful opportunities that can come your way. Are you willing to expand into those opportunities? All that requires your nervous system to have capacity. So what that requires is for you to learn to be, to retrain your nervous system. You know, if, uh, if you grew up in a household that's chaotic, your nervous system is used to chaos. It doesn't mean that it has a healthy response to chaos, mm -hmm. but it's familiar with it. Right. It, it, and then it may not be familiar with calm. And so you meet a guy that's so like calm and loving and you're used to like, you know, chaotic, someone who yells at you, you're going to be like, oh, I'm not attracted to that guy. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. You'll almost be bored. That. You'll be bored. Exactly. And so it all starts with ourselves, like the opportunity to really get to know all these parts so that we have capacity. And so that then what we're choosing is really what's best for us, not what we were told was, was best, not what we needed to take on as best to survive or to rebel. 
Mm -hmm. And one of the things that you said that I'd just like to pull on the thread just a little bit was be with all the parts and feel all the feelings. And I want to highlight that because there is this, this wellness industry positivity bus that some people are driving that says, you know, it, you've got to be positive at all costs and all about positive attitude. And yes, positive attitude matters. But to your point, if we're pretending like we're not feeling things, we're really getting in our own way and in our own yeah. own evolution. Yeah, there's, there's no there's no capacity there. Um, one of the modules in my program, you know, there's a, a section that asks, we, I list like the top emotions, you know, like joy, love, peace, anger. And I'm like, which ones do you indulge in? Which ones do you avoid? Which ones can you feel? Which ones can't you? And it's amazing how many people will say like, I can't feel love. I can't feel joy. And of course, we all want that. We all want to be able to think positive all the time and manifest everything. But your, your access to that is from feeling whatever is there. You can't plant a new seed called joy where there's anger. Mm -hmm. You have to first pull that root of anger out. And But it is, it's actually, I'd say, more of an issue I feel that's coming up for people right now in this conversation of manifestation. Mm -hmm. You hear a lot about like manifestation, manifestation, you can manifest everything, just like sit manifest and feel the peace and da 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 and why everybody wants that but so few people are able to actually manifest is because they're not feeling the things that they don't want to feel first mm, that's big yeah yes absolutely because if we're pretending that the feelings don't exist, then mm -hmm. I call it like friction. There's low level friction or static in the background. Mm -hmm. And it's the thing that you think about all the time, even though mm -hmm. it's not at the forefront of your brain. Yeah. You're just, we're very used to stuffing stuff down or muting it. Or like you said, I actually, like we said, like static, like this quiet static, like I'm just going to lower the volume all the way down, but it's not quite off. It's not mute. It's that like one or two so energetically it's there and I like to think of it like a garden mm -hmm. so if if your life is a garden and um you know you you want like I want to manifest the most beautiful roses and you know vegetable garden and blah 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 well girl get some work you got some weeds to clear out to make room for that <laughs> I love and, that and that's it and it's just like um you know, uh, what's his name? Oh, man, I'm now blinking on his name. Uh, famous author said, list is any feeling felt all the way through. And I've Ooh. had that experience. And I've had clients have that experience. Yes. I had a client that his father, he was in his 50s when he worked with me at my retreat. His father was murdered when he was four years old. And so there was always, you could imagine this heartache, this pain in his heart. And he, so much plant medicine, so much to try and quote unquote, get rid of it. We always want to get rid of the quote unquote bad emotions. And what I had him do is go into it. Like how much can you accept it, accept it, accept it, be with it, accept it, accept it, accept it. Well, within 20 minutes of that, he experienced ecstasy. Mm -hmm. he, goes, he goes, oh my God, this thing that I've been trying to change and run from my whole life, whoever thought it could feel so good. Mm -hmm. I love that. And you know, they say that pain and pleasure are two sides yeah. of the same coin. And that speaks to that too, that when we actually lean into the discomfort, we can come out the other side completely new. But for yeah. somebody who's sitting with the pain and they're they're so scared to see it, they're clenched, they're going through life like, I will not feel this pain. I refuse. It's too much. Yeah. How do you tell them it's safe to begin to access the pain? Yeah, yeah. So there's stages. There's stages to healing that, right? And like stage one is 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 awareness and part of awareness and and building more strength and safety is in awareness of um, 
a what what ways am I dysregulated right now? Right. So a lot of nervous system regulation is required for us to be with something specific that's causing us some feeling. And then, you know, really calming the monkey mind a bit. Like, yes, a lot of it is somatic and it is in our body, but we have this mind that likes to hijack and take over. So building this bridge where they can work cohesively together of, okay, who did I learn this from? Why is this coming up for me? And it's not in order to solve it. It's just to have more relationship with it. Mm -hmm. And then also one of my favorite parts about the ability to learn to be with our emotions is to get away from the label. Painful. Mm -hmm. So I Mm -hmm. say painful and Brenda says painful and five other people in the room say painful. And we all have a different, could have a completely different it, 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 there's such a range, right? But if I say it's in my solar plex, uh, it's the size of a golf ball. It's warm. It's spiky. It feels twisted and tight. We're all on the same page. Yes. Mm-hmm. And that's what I call get away from the label and go one layer deeper to getting related to it at the level of sensation. Sensation is the language of the nervous system. So when you speak in sensations, you're actually speaking to the nervous system in a way that it could process and digest that energy. Yes, 100%. And the healing is so fast when we get to that deeper layer. Yeah. Yeah. So so that that's a big part of it is like, can I be with this and then... Um, marry the energy so when you think about when people get married they come into union no resistance it's like um ride the wave you know when you're in the ocean it's like your best chance of getting to shore is riding the wave not standing there getting smacked with it yeah not diving diving into it it's riding that energy um and so How much can you marry the energy? I'll say to my client. And what that looks like is how does it want to be expressed? Mm -hmm. Uh, Sometimes a client may say, oh, I feel nauseous. And the next thing they do is they swallow. And I'm like, no, no, no. If you're really nauseous, you wouldn't be swallowing right now. Go marry the energy. How much can you amplify it? amplify the energy give it so much permission which is stage two of healing is Mm -hmm. acceptance how much can you accept it nothing to change nothing to fix just ride it it's the wave this is it it's this size let me ride it and express it so if it's painful okay usually something is quote unquote painful like i had an experience like that recently my whole body felt flared up and painful but first, I wanted to cry. I just let the tears flow. Then I wanted to scream, but not out loud, like cathartic anger scream, more like like holding it in, like mm-hmm. amplifying it in that way. Mm-hmm. And what happened next is I felt all the energy go to my solar plex and something unlocked and I lost, lost my breath for about 10 seconds. Mm. And then, which is what happens if you ever get punched in the solar plex yep. um but it cleared it and so yeah that's that's the power of it but to summarize that take it slow and recognize that regulating your nervous system and repeating to yourself like i'm safe safe to be in my body safe to feel find that safe place what feels comfortable to you knowing you could always return to your powerful breath. Mm -hmm. And the truth is that with the big parts of your identity, they're the dragon and they're going to fight back. And this is when it helps to be held in community, be held by 
a facilitator, that you need that. And it's okay to need that. There's no shame around it. You know, healing happens in community. And so borrow the strength and the safety of another person. If you don't have it, it's going to excel your chances of that. Mm. So. I love that you yeah. said that because I think that there are some people, especially those with avoidant attachment, who feel like, mm, I'm going to leave soon. It's not worth making friends right now anyway, carrying in from childhood perhaps, or um, it, it can feel really scary to ask for support and then to have that need met is almost as triggering mm-hmm. as the the need itself. And so I love that you yeah. just said, you know, it's okay to ask for support. I feel that way too. Yeah. We, we get to remind each other of that. Um, and whenever a person's ready, they're ready. That's why I feel like those of us that are healers, you know, we're not salespeople. Like this is not something I'm going to sell you into. Um, the, I do believe in divine timing for people. Sometimes it takes being hit with the Mack truck. Right? Mm-hmm. Hitting your ground zero for you to be like, okay, well, the pain of not doing something is greater than doing something. So, and they're just the reality of us. You know, humans, a lot of times we are creatures of comfort. Unfortunately, what people don't realize is that you're limiting your comfort by staying in that illusion of comfort. And that actually by facing all of it, you are expanding your capacity to handle more. And that's where freedom is. That's where power is. Mm, I love that. Then you can handle, it's like, it's like, oh, are you only going to go in the ocean when the waves are really small? But if you ultimately want to be like the best surfer ever, you got to go in there and get smacked a little bit. But then eventually you're the best of the best. You're like, okay, whatever it is, I can handle it. Like now, you know, and, and what that translates to for like my clients is people finally have the courage to take a leap and start that business they wanted to quit that job to leave that marriage or to commit to that person there's courage on the other side of that and the access to it is your inner child Mm -hmm. you know when you think of a child when they're upset they don't want to play like when they're really upset you can't really convince them to play Um, But the second they move through that upset, which by the way, they did studies at Harvard, that 90 seconds, you can move through an emotion. Yes. And there's 90 second waves, 90 second waves. And so we think that it's going to literally take us down, but it's 90 seconds. And so there's multiple, multiple studies that show brain research shows it's 90 seconds. There's physiological research that's measuring it in the blood, measuring the chemistry of the blood that shows again, 90 seconds. And then we know anecdotally, we can watch people move through emotions and it takes 90 seconds. Yeah. The reason that it seems longer is because, oh, well, that was all the time you resisted. Right. (laughs) Like, or that was all the time that you indulge. Like when we don't have control over our stories, our mind, what we're telling ourselves, then you may be fueling it. You may be like, well, originally I was upset because I didn't hear back from this guy I went out on a date with. Oh, but now I'm even more upset because I'm telling myself I'm never going to meet someone. I'm not pretty enough. Nobody likes me. So then you're creating, you're, you're, you're compounding. And so people be like 90 seconds, bullshit. Anytime I <laughs> go into my emotion, I'm there for two hours. Like, no, no, no. When you learn, it's like, it's like when you learn how to ride the wave properly, you'll get to shore in 90 seconds. When you don't have a clue and you don't have the tools yet, yeah, you could get stuck out there for four hours. So I get why people are afraid. And that's why you and I do what we do to give people the tools to, to be able to move through it. Um, but yeah, when a child moves through it in 90 seconds, what are they doing the very next second? They're playing or laughing. They're playing. They're playing. They're laughing. They're back to believing in anything is possible, full self-expression. And so we get to remember that we have that ability to, um, to come back to full possibility, which is where manifestation happens. Mm-hmm. You really want, want to manifest? I've been manifesting like a mofo the past three weeks. 
<laughs> I'll just say it. Um, and so I'm, I'm hot on this topic right now because I'm just remembering uh, that, like, how powerful creators we are once we know how to move through whatever sticky there then it's like okay now i'm back to creation I'm back to being that child in wonder in full play where i can create any game i want and leave mm -hmm. i love this and you know it it reminds me when we're thinking about the four hours we're not feeling in those four hours, we're not feeling that emotion. What we're doing is thinking about it. Yep. And yep, the difference yeah. is getting out of the story and into the emotion, into the body. Yeah. That's yeah. that's so where I, the Yes, yeah, so I have a tool for that. Oh, yeah. Tell for us. everyone. So, you know, usually what we do is we call our like best friend, right? And you just think you could just dump it on them, or you call someone, you call your mom, whoever is like your closest. And you call them because they love and accept you no matter what. It's like unconditional. There's no judgment. You don't need to have a filter. You can just let it hang and be met. Well, instead of calling your best friend, you get to grab your journal and dump it all out as if you're going to mail it to your best friend later. It doesn't have to be full sentences. It doesn't have to make sense. It's basically like, Dream of consciousness. So, like, there's a lot of different voices that are happening in our head. It's like a dinner. I call it, I actually coined it like, have a dinner party, is what I tell my clients. I'm like, go have a dinner party. Like, go dump it out on paper because you're at the table with a bunch of loud Italians right now. And the only one you could hear is the loudest one. And usually it's our ego or it's our inner critic. It's not usually our inner child. Mm hmm. And so, but we could hear different parts at different moments. So it's like, just dump out whatever is coming to mind. Transcribe, transcribe, transcribe. Write it all out. Then when you feel like you let it all out, go back and circle anywhere that you wrote. I feel dot, dot, dot. I feel like dot, dot, dot. I am dot, dot, dot. That's your inner child. That's the part that you need tending to. Mm, that's and so you may good. hear, you may hear your heart in there too. Like, well, what I want, what I desire, great. But until you tend to the child, you can't access that. And I'm telling you, if you don't do this, you're just going to hear your inner critic or your ego. Here's the thing about your ego. Your ego is your amigo. Your ego is your friend. Your ego is actually the ultimate protector when you don't know how to tend to yourself it's kind of like the babysitter for the child when you don't tend to your inner child but you know the babysitter is not going to heal the child it's not going to feed or raise the child as well as the parent will but it's going to protect them and the way our ego protects us is necessary for us to have so we don't need to get rid of our ego we just need to give our ego less of a job to do and it's going to say oh you're better than this person or you know, it's going to look external to distract you from what you're feeling internal. Mm -hmm. So, yeah, so you do this practice, you identify that little one, and then you picture yourself in whatever your sacred safe space is, if it's your bedroom, whatever it is, and you picture that little one, little Brenda, being the part of you that walks into the room and says that thing. I am scared or I feel like no one's listening to me or I feel like I can't speak up for myself. Mm. And then first and foremost, yeah, you give her what you imagine a little child that said that would need in order to truly feel safe and loved. You hold her. You say, yeah, yeah, you feel that way. You validate, validate and acknowledge. We need to learn to validate and acknowledge and give permission for what we're experiencing because it is what we're experiencing and we're experiencing it 100 percent. so whether or not we want to call it inner child we're still experiencing it mm -hmm. and so i love your approach of like let's just give some love some compassion to mm -hmm. this little part yeah yeah and then like where it could get a little complex trickier 
or especially with our big identity parts. Think of it like your life is a movie and you got certain main characters that you play. Those main characters are like, oh, no, 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 you're not taking my role away from me. So with things like that, yeah, giving love and acceptance to yourself is good, but to really transform that role, that part of yourself, you're going to have to explore a little deeper. Like, well, at what point did I learn this? Who did I learn this from? Oh, this isn't even mine. This is mom's energy. Mm -hmm. Mom modeled this to me. And everything related to yourself is modeled by your mom. Mom is the model for the self. And that is just innate, instinctual to us. We're born. Mom holds us. We don't know we're looking at her, that she's our mom. But her voice and her energy feels like home, feels familiar. And in that moment, you form this relationship of like, oh, I am mom, mom is me. And you look at her as your role model for everything related to how you see yourself, treat yourself, take care of yourself. And you either copy or you do the opposite. Or you create a way to survive if it was a traumatic incident. Right. And, you know, our parents, as well meaning as they might have been, and as skilled as they might have been, can still create some misfires. Meaning that, you know, in that moment when you might have gone up to mom while she was cooking and she said, I need five more minutes, your child self could have perceived that as, I don't have time for you. You're not important. And so we yeah. might have wounds like that, that they don't make sense to our adult minds. But in our child mind, it was really devastating. Yeah. Or it could be something like, oh, I had the most amazing mother, Brenda. She took care of the house. She took care of everything. She was always there for us. Oh, wonderful. Did you ever see her do anything for herself? Hmm. No. Oh, and you wonder why you struggle with putting yourself first and self-care. Because what that might have imprinted the child with is always keep busy, put others first don't have needs or your needs don't matter. Right. And just like that, something that mom did that she thought was so good, which was also taught a dysfunctional behavior. Like, well, where did you leave yourself out of the equation? Mm -hmm. And this is where I always tell moms, I'm like, moms, don't feel guilty about taking time for yourself away from your kids. You're actually teaching them to make time for themselves and take care of them. A hundred percent. Absolutely. So I know that you have a free gift for our listeners. Can you tell us about that? Um, let's see. I'm looking at my notes and trying to get my eyes in the right place. I was like, ooh, this is a good one. It is a free training, three keys to creating lasting transformation for your clients. And I'm imagining that even if somebody's listening and they don't have clients, they could yeah. still benefit from that. A hundred percent. And I'm working on a bunch of new free stuff as well. So if you follow me on Instagram, I'll DM every new follower and I will send you anything that I have that fits your needs. So cause I'm working on a bunch right now. Mm, I love that. And tell us where yeah. we can follow you on Instagram. What's your handle? Yeah. Just my name, Perry. So, and I do DM every new follower, at least at this stage. I mean, if I got 10,000 new followers a day, that might change. But, and I do it because, you know, I want to get to know the human behind the quote unquote follower mm -hmm. so that we could really serve each other best. So, yeah, yeah, I love that. That's amazing. And your website is a not .com, correct? It's, no, it's training camp for the soul.com. Training camp for the soul.com. I'm so glad you told me. Yeah. Amazing. Awesome. So I have just one last question as we kind of come to a close. What is one thing that you either did or did not do that brought you to your yes filled life? <clears throat> I chose me. I took a huge leap 11 and a half years ago with $2,000 to my name, $40,000 in debt, no car, no job, no home, one friend in San Diego. I left a five year relationship in New York City. And started fresh. I just chose me. I chose, I was like, nothing here lights my heart up. California, here I come. I don't know what my plan is. Sorry, mom and dad, you might lose 
sleep over this, but I just got to choose me. And the only thing that I know me wants right now is to leave this relationship, leave New York City and move to Cal. Mm. So, you know, the power of like choosing yourself and I keep choosing me and I look at the ripple effect on that today of like the, the lives I've impacted because I kept choosing me. Yeah. That's amazing. Absolutely amazing. And for the person out there that's thinking, how would I even do that? Did you just trust that the next step that revealed itself was the right one and, and felt into it and then took that step? Yeah. Yeah. So, um, initially it was hitting my, my rock bottom, right? Like my relationship feeling like it was come to an end, uh, and literally saying to myself, well, can't fall off the floor. So (laughs) I got nothing to lose. I don't want any of this stuff. So it's only up from here. And that's what I mean by sometimes, you know, we have to hit our, our ground zero, our apocalypse and feel like we have nothing to lose. And then there's so much freedom of that in that. Um, And then, yeah, when I did make the move, it was very humbling because living in New York, we have a bit of this, like, you know, cocky attitude of like, oh, we're New Yorkers, you know, you can make it here, you can make it anywhere. And and very like forceful, masculine energy, go, go, go push. And it got me nowhere, got me to ground zero. Right. Mm -hmm. And so when I got to California and I felt like I have nothing, I was like, hey, God, I'm 32 years old. I thought I knew everything I needed. Uh, that got me nowhere. Uh, I'm humbled. Clearly, I don't know what's best for me. So, um, yeah, take over. Show me the way. And I slowed down and I started literally living for the day, like for the moment and realized how much the universe is there. Like the miraculous is available to us all the time if we make space to receive it. But, you know, when you're busy doing and controlling your life and something good happens, you acknowledge yourself for it. You're like, oh, I did that. Great. You don't see it as a miracle. You're like, I did that. But when you quote unquote do nothing but believe and hold the energy that like of what you desire and things come to you. You're like, oh my God, that's a fucking miracle. And it was just like, <laughs> I mean, if we had another few hours, I could tell you the like miracle after miracle after miracle after miracle. And I and I I call that time in my life like road trip with God. Ooh, you know, really that's a great me. book title. Yeah. Yeah. It really taught me um to trust the universe for the first time. And, uh, yeah, you know, 11 years in now, um, that, that, that trust is stronger than ever. I will definitely say I've had moments of losing connection to that. Um, and it's good to be back. (laughs) Mm, That's amazing. Thank you for sharing that. You know, I, I feel like there's something about for me too, I've done it three times where I hit a rock bottom and I just like picked it up and did something different. And every time I didn't know what to do except for the next thing. And mm-hmm. it's always led to the next thing, to the next thing, to the next thing. And it never once made sense. Yeah. Yeah. You know, I recently realized that in times where we hit our quote unquote rock bottom or frustration, there's some contraction there. Wouldn't you say? Yeah. For, you feel for sure. contracted. And my most recent contraction was about a month ago and I handled it differently than I have in the past year where I really felt like when I, this is where I feel like I lost sight of that connection to, to the universe source and go into like, Oh, I'm in the contraction. Oh, let me figure it out. or Let me force. And this time I was like, I'm burnt out on that. Not burnt out, but like I'm bankrupt on that. Like mm-hmm. <laughs> here I am again. No, no more. Now I'm just going to sit with it. <clears throat> and I was on a podcast weeks ago and it came to me this metaphor of like, you know, when a woman is 
having contractions in labor. What is she supposed to, what is she told to do? Breathe. Breathe. Relax. Mm-hmm. Yeah. And focus on something in front of you. And it's the same thing, especially for those of us, whatever your challenges in life, whether you are a coach or an entrepreneur or a mom or whatever, we all have these moments and we end up not like the part of the contraction is also because we're not just looking at what's in front of us. We're thinking like doomsday 10 months from now. Right. Or we're recounting something that happened two years ago. It's it's exactly future yeah, yeah. casting or, or living in the or past. past. Mm-hmm. Exactly. And so now to me, it feels with that like metaphor, it feels like a, something like anchored in that anytime I feel a contraction, it's like, oh, this isn't a time to figure it out or force or cling. It's a time to how much can you relax? Hold that dual awareness, the duality of can I be with the unknown and the fear and the frustration, let it be there, while at the same time also relax and do what I want, peace and like trust in the universe and breathe and Mm -hmm. allow and breathe. And then, you know, the contractions, if you breathe through contractions that's what expands the uterus and so the expansion comes when we really allow ourselves to do what we're supposed to do in the contraction which is breathe and relax breathe relax and focus on the thing in front of you focus on like they'll tell i mean i I haven't gone through labor yet but they'll tell a woman like yeah focus on something right in front of you focus on the spot on the wall right there and just breathe so same thing. Yeah, it's so beautiful. And, you know, to your point, I'm finding that the more self-work I do, the more I handle contractions differently. And so, you know, I went to a conference two weeks ago. I spoke um, with a bunch of my peers for from a career that I used to have. And I got done with it and instantly hit the contraction you know, the contraction of, oh my goodness, this is, is this really the last time I'm going to do this because now I've pivoted. And it was so interesting to just be like, okay, I'm just going to slow down. I'm not going to force through this. I'm just going to allow myself to get curious around what is this really about and what's here. Yeah. Yeah. Yeah, Yeah, exactly. The more we, uh, we, we practice, becoming what I call energetic Jedis, you know, moving with the energy, riding the waves. Um, Yeah, the quicker the contractions, quicker the expansions, the manifestations, all that. And so like, listeners, that's what's available to you on the other Mm -hmm. side of like you holding on to the pain or the past or the fear that if you open Pandora's box, that it'll suck you in. And that's where you get to ride our coattails we've been through it you don't get stuck into the darkness you you move through it to the light to the power and to the ability to really manifest anything and everything you you desire and you deserve like you deserve you deserve to remember how much who you truly are is enough that's it you are enough just being you and it's more of just like but you need to remember who that you person Mm -hmm. is and then you get to just be you and receive and enjoy life and give give through your gifts because you'll know what your gifts are that's right and you'll give from a place of generosity true generosity not obligation and the energy behind that is really different yeah Mm, Yeah, not brenda and i want that for you yes we We want that for you listeners Listeners, I would love it if you would screenshot wherever you're listening to this and tag Anat and I on social media. Let us know what your favorite part is. Let us know if you have questions. We would love to hear from you because, um, you know, Anat and I both found our transformation in, in finding healing for ourselves. And we know that you can do this too. Yeah. Yeah. Anat, this has been amazing. Thank you. Thank you for being a guest. 
Yeah. Thank you, Brenda, for having me. Thank you, listeners, for tuning in and staying with us. Isn't Anat amazing? Oh my gosh, what synchronicity (laughs) that we have so many people in common and she is such a gifted healer. Please go give her a follow on Instagram and tag us both and let us know what was your favorite part of this episode? What questions do you still have? And don't forget about the retreat, the Yes Academy, the retreat where you can attend a retreat and leave as an energy healer with your Reiki one attunement. It is going to be an absolutely transformational time, April one through five in Beaverton, Oregon, where you'll learn about your energy and what expanding into energy healing looks like. You'll test holding space to yourself with your Reiki one attunement and certification. You'll have breathwork sessions led by me, a community of people who really get you. You'll learn to be yourself in community cook your meals in sisterhood, laughing around the kitchen in a village mentality where everyone has a job and gets to contribute. And of course, the meals are provided. You'll enjoy long evenings of connection, cards, and deep conversation around the fire. To learn more, go to brendawinkle.com forward slash retreat. And the link is in the show notes. Thank you so much for listening to your Yes Filled Life. If you loved this episode, would you please share it with someone you care about? Bye for now. Until next time. 